Welcome to Ghost Recon Wildlands. I've been looking forward to playing this game for a long time, and last week Ubisoft invited me to a recording event in Paris to play the game with a few other guys from the UK. We got hands-on with a pre-release version of the game on the PS4 with limited content, so all the footage is subject to change, but I wanted to give you guys some of my impressions and thoughts based on what I played last week. For context, I was playing with Arex, Jack Frags, and Game Riot, and we were all communicating on a separate channel, so it hasn't overlaid onto this gameplay, but we were talking with each other all the time. We only got access to one of the regions in the co-op section of the game, which is the footage that I'm showing you, called Montayoc, but there are 20 other regions in the final game as well, and you will get to see those once the game releases. First off, before we get into some proper gameplay, I wanted to talk about the character customization and the gunsmith, which is the weapon customization available in Wildlands. Now, in one word, I would describe it as incredible. Proper facial control, you get to pick a base and then you can tweak the eye color. Scarring of the skin, you can change the hair, you can pick different beards, and even more. You get full clothing control, right from the top that you wear all the way down to the boots. I went full gilly. <laughs> Not just being able to pick different clothes, but each unique item of clothing had its own color options as well. So some of the shirts that you were wearing had more than 20 different colour style patterns that you could pick from. And that was all within one shirt. You could wear jeans if you like, and you could make those lighter or darker. You could wear combat trousers. You could make those black, khaki, green, grey, whatever you wanted. There was pretty much an option that you could choose. Then there were different accessories like glasses, headgear, backpacks, clothing patches, and even tattoos if you wanted to go that far. You get all the chance to set this up before you start playing, and you can change most of it as you go along as well. Once you've picked your basic character style, you can't really change that too much, but all the clothing, like the trousers, tops, headgear, whatever you want, all of that can be changed as you unlock more stuff the more missions that you do. There's so much customization here that you'll be hard pressed to end up picking the same character items as somebody else. It really gives you the freedom to create whatever character you really want to play as. And as we know with games nowadays, it's all about that personal, unique experience. Ubisoft have nailed the character customization in this game. It is very, very good. As for the gunsmith, which is the weapon customization in the game, anyone who's played Ghost Recon Future Soldier, you will be familiar with this look and feel, but it's been boosted up and improved over its older iteration, so you're able to change weapon parts like barrels, triggers, and stocks, and all of that will affect the statistics of the weapon, so if you put a suppressor on there, obviously that's going to give it less power, but you won't be detected by enemies when you fire it. There are even different triggers, like you could change a full auto trigger to something that would only allow you to select semi-auto or three round burst, so there's a lot of customization there, and you can really find a weapon that suits you, and then change the attachments to make it even more towards your playstyle. You can jump in and out of Gunsmith whenever you like, really, during the game. Just make sure you are in a safe place, because if you're in the middle of a gunfight and you decide to bring up the menu, the game continues in the background. It's not just going to stop for you. So make sure you take cover or you use Gunsmith before you get into an engagement and you pick the weapon that you want to use. Now let's get into some gameplay. For most of the day, we were playing four-person co-op, and this, in my opinion, is 100% the way the game was intended to be played. You can play solo and have, I think, three AI buddies running alongside you, and then your friends can jump in and out of that. They can join you live in the game, and one of your AI soldiers will just be substituted out, and your friend can come and play with you. But really, the full experience comes when you've got four people playing. Scouting out locations, first of all, is always the best way to approach, at least that's what we found when we were playing. Sometimes enemy AI can be hidden inside buildings, and if you don't scope out the area properly before you decide to run in, then you might be caught off guard by maybe five or six enemies who are inside the building 
that you've got to get to. You might have only seen the people standing in the courtyard outside, and then things can become a little bit more difficult. There are various different ways that you can scope out objectives. You could actually send a player in who could then go and mark out players as they see them. You could fly a drone overhead so that you can see what's going on outside the buildings. You can use binoculars if you're a little bit closer, but obviously that's quite a static view and you have to move your soldier around to really use those properly. Or you could have one of the players sit back with a high-powered scope on their sniper rifle and play a little bit of Overwatch for you. So there's lots of different ways that you can scope out an area before you go in. The four of us on comms, we worked out different tactics each time we approached a different objective. A lot of the time we used the marking tool, which is bound to X on the PS4 controller when you aim down the sights of your weapon. One of the players might have marked two targets and then I'd come along, stand next to him, and then he'd pick the left one, I'd pick the right. We'd fire at the same time and eliminate two targets at once, which only sounds like one bullet instead of two, and then that can confuse the enemy a little bit, and they might just come running in one direction, and then you can split up and sort of work your way around them, and then take those guys out as well. So there's a lot you need to think about when you're going in. There is, of course, the option to go all guns blazing if you really want to and just cause absolute mayhem. And sometimes that's a viable option if there are explosive things lying around on the ground. But when working as a team, I think stealth is where it's at. I feel like the game makes you think that stealth is the right option here. Lying prone and staying still when a hostile helicopter flies overhead means it won't detect you. Equipping silencers on your weapons will of course conceal your location and leave enemies less of a chance of picking up your location. Some of the compounds that you need to attack will have an alarm on them, so if you're detected, one of the AI will raise the alarm and then reinforcements will come in and make your job even harder. So if you can infiltrate and turn off that alarm before anyone else spots you, then you've got a better chance of taking that compound because reinforcements won't arrive. No alarm was sounded. It's all about the stealth movement and I think the game is trying to tell you that the stealth option gives you a whole lot more of a gameplay experience than simply just running in, throwing a grenade, exploding a fuel barrel and causing absolute mayhem. Like I said, you can do that and it is very, very fun, but sometimes the target that you're looking to infiltrate will get in a car and drive away and then you've got to go and chase after it and that makes your job even harder. Now, the fact that I've mentioned being detected a couple of times in this commentary already, perhaps I should expand on that a little bit. You can do all of that stealth work here in Ghost Recon Wildlands, and as soon as you're detected, all of that work is undone. The threat of you being detected is always present. The world continues to live around you, and you need to be very aware of that. The game doesn't just focus down on one section of the map whilst you're playing it. It's an open world, so everything is continuing to live as you work on the different missions. Drug cartel patrols driving along roads nearby will be very close to you if you're trying to sort of execute a kill mission on a target and you might not want to make too much noise if you're close to a main road. Now if you're attacking something more isolated, perhaps off the beaten track as it were, then going loud might not have the same consequences. Multiple times we were working our way down hillsides towards the next location, scouting out as we went, and then a cartel helicopter would fly over the top, spot us because obviously we're running in broad daylight, and then it would light us up, call him back up, and suddenly we were in a full-scale firefight, and we had to deal with that before we could continue on to get towards the objective. And sometimes we were too close to the objective that they'd see what's going on, and then the target we were going for, as I said, would just drive off, and then it makes our job even harder. The game feels very connected and spontaneous where you really do need to be paying attention to what's going on in order to be effective and complete the mission that you've set out to do. And it kind of feels like it's got a bit of a Far Cry feel to the exploration of the world as well. Like, you can mark out different targets and you can go and attack them, or you can just free roam and you can end up starting a fight all on your own anyway. If you go into one location, enemies will be there waiting for you, and you might be able to loot the area for different weapons, ammo, and transport if you need it, 
but you haven't completed the mission that is then set in that location as well. The open world doesn't sort of feel lost in the story narrative that you're trying to complete along the way. The game doesn't try and control you or push you in a certain direction. It kind of just waits for you to make the decision and, and call the shots, basically. All the while providing this open world that's continuing to change around you all of the time. This game is certainly a new direction for the Ghost Recon franchise and it's a game that I think is going to attract a lot of new players to the series. Now, Ubisoft create a lot of open world games, there's no denying that. And taking another one of their franchises in that direction might seem like they're diluting its potential, but to be honest here, the game is easy to learn, but it's hard to master. And that's something that I always look for in a game. Is it going to provide me with a challenge for long enough that I can come back and play the game over and over again? Is there always something different for me to try and do? I think the game does that very well. One drawback I feel is the huge amount of controls that are bound onto the controller. Because you can carry so many items, some non-standard button combos are used for you to be able to access all of those features, so things like using the D-pad buttons to cycle through gadgets and explosives. So it's not just one button for one gadget, you need to cycle through them and find the one that you're looking for. So really you're going to have to learn how many button presses are needed to get to what you want. Another one, the combat wheel, currently uses R1 to bring it up on the screen, but then requires you to use the left analog stick to select what you want. You have to use two hands. That completely removes your ability to move your soldier whilst a translucent UI pops up and that's a little bit jarring and it can get you killed if you're not careful. The game is full of content for you to use but perhaps the controls will limit people to what they will end up actually using in the game. So overall I'm quite impressed with Ghost Recon Wildlands. It still has some bugs in parts and and it isn't quite finished yet, and of course we were very limited in what we could play on the day, but my thoughts and opinions coming out of that capture session, I think everyone else had the same feeling. The game is quite fun. It's definitely a game that you'll have more fun playing with your friends and communicating, but the solo play does allow you to take full control of all the different tools at your disposal, you can use the AI, and you can still have a good experience. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the game down below in the comments. I'll 100% be playing this game on the release on PC. I want to explore some more of those regions with different scenery and I want to see if I can run the game at 4K because it was a quite good looking game on the PS4. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.